en route to finding the greatest Drake feature of all time. It was a challenge. It was a healthy challenge, but a challenge. Every single song with one of these in them, a parentheses F-E-T or F-E-A-T dot D-R-I-C, D-R, D-R. This list in this video took blood, sweat, tears, an arm, a leg, a d containing some of the worst Drake features to the most iconic of all time. From his earliest release, Cher, to his most recent, Needle, with Nicki Minaj. What the? Is that my phone? My bad, I'm gonna go. Hello? Wait, what? For real? So Drake dropped a new feature with Yeet, and I'm supposed to add it to this video? But I can't. I already recorded the video. I'm a bitch? Whoa! What did I do? And he hangs up. Man, this guy. This video's already outdated before it's even published. Well, go down in the comments and tell me where this song should rank. And speaking of the comments, real quick disclaimers. Boom. I don't feel like saying them, but read them. Boom. Easy. Got it? Got it. Love you all. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy. Boom. The one and only true bad, bad song on this list. Cool little introduction interlude. Bro, why did they have to pitch his voice so high on this song? If he sung this normally, it would be 10 times better. Two different, you know, avenues of rap colliding on one song that just doesn't match. Trippy Red's way of rap and Drake's just can't coexist. I'll pass on this Drake. I listened to this song a lot last summer when it first came out, but now I look back and realize how cheesy Drake's part really is. Jamaican Drake at 141. Bland, but not bad. The beat is cool on this song. I really like the beat. This song is not as bad as it looks. When you think of the long history between Future and Drake, this is not what you think of at all. This song is if you were like to spray cow poop with the most extravagant cologne in the world. Will it smell bad or smell good? It would smell bad. And that goes to show you Smiley's part was so bad, Drake cannot save the song. Good song. Drake's part at the beginning was great, but then it gets a little redundant, but I like it still. Drake and DJ Khaled don't hit like they used to on collaborations. A better Drake performance on, you know, that African Afrobeat sound. A very fun, fast-paced Mary J. Pop song. The newest song on this list is good. I like it. Hey, you went fly, Billy Spur. Hey, you went flying around the world. All you need has a great, you know, subtle, nice flow. Two of my favorite single artists, you know, collabing on a song. I remember being fairly disappointed when this came out. But, you know, I came around to the song. I think it's good. Early Drake. This is like the earliest, the the oldest song on this list. Shad Sean Garrett. You know, he's a feature on this song. Shout out to him. Wayne flowing over this woman singing instrumental. It's really good. It's honestly great. But bad meaning good, good, good. This is a very young and underrated Drake performance. Off the same album, the same thing applies for this song as well. Fun lyrics from Lil Wayne on this, you know, Chanel intro. It sucks that this song is in the shadow of the other one on this album because it's pretty good. Drake literally just came in, sang the hook, and dipped, which is fine, but it's kind of funny. This song is so like Dark Lane demo tape vibes. Round of applause, baby, make that air clap. This song sounds like the movie trailer rollout song for like a ghetto Lion King. That made no sense. I shouldn't have said that. Freshman year me love this song. When I look at this album, I don't even look at that or think of the album. I think of this song and the other one. What was it called? Bubblegum. Bubblegum. That's what it's called. Loved these two songs. I had this song on repeat about like three years ago. Good times. Please go listen to Drake's verse two on this song. It's at two minutes and 36 seconds. Go do it. My mom loves Lenny Kravitz. So, you know, shout out Lenny Kravitz. Sipping on the drink, sipping on the drink. All about the moolah, moolah, moolah. I know you've been searching for someone. I love when Drake gets in his pop bag. Diddy right now in the trenches in deep allegations right now as we speak. I love the way you twist and turn, twist and turn, yep. If you listen to this song on normal occasion, boy, you freak, boy, you nasty freaky mother time be flying like i swear that pushing p era was like last year this is two years old rihanna rapping man <sighs> we must stay focused brothers we must great music video shout out to the viners i used to watch that were in it this song make me wanna you know what i mean it just makes you wanna you know what i mean like, click off the video, go to your music platform, and listen to Drake's part at the beginning of this song. Bro, I will lead you in the right direction. Trust, bro. Trust me. He flew at the beginning of this song on this beat. Flew on it. This song is great for everything Drake didn't do. You know, Drake's part is good, but 
it's Travs and Young Thugs. You put two great R&B artists together, you know, match made in heaven with this song. Top 10 favorite song on this list. I just, when I hear this song, I think of like playing this song over a recording of like the greatest vacation I ever had. Like jumping off a rock into that island beach water or just riding dune buggies in the desert when the beat drop of this song hits. If only one man can wish, huh? But man, shout out DJ Khaled. Great DJing, mixing, whatever you do on this song. The live concert atmosphere of this song actually gives it a boost for me. Great vibe. This song will get me up and jumping so fast. Like it's just a great R&B amp up song. The harmonies by the chorus near like Bryson Tiller's part is amazing on this song. The energy Drake had at the beginning of this song is the energy I need when I create new content because I be drowsy sometimes. The ultimate workout music. Like if you were to make a montage of you working out or lifting weights, this is the song you play. Pimp C took this song over, I ain't gonna lie. He was flowing on this beat. This song is just so cool. I'm sorry, like I never heard this song until this video and I'm glad I did. The second little baby commercially successful song behind Freestyle, of course. The flow on this song, it will always be immaculate. Underrated. It sucks that this song is in the shadows of the other YG and Drake song because this song is so good. Drake on this Cali flow is magnificent. Not gonna lie, Trey Song's performance on this was so good. Drake kinda wasn't needed, but it's an addition. Award-winning pop song. This song is was and still is fun for what it was. The deep erotic and sketchy tone of this song is so real in this like House of Balloon feel, this House of Balloon vibe. It sucks I don't go to this song as much because when it comes to Drake in the weekend, I just go to Take Care and the songs on there, but I've always really loved this song. Had a baby Mary J. Blige, she had one hell of a performance on this song. This song is what I imagine 40 year old, 50 year old marriages have sex to. Hey. Top five favorite collaborator with Drake, Party Next Door. And songs like these are the reason why. Drake skied all over this beat. He was gliding on it. The production on this song is nice. This song takes me back to my times listening to Mindless Behavior, and I know it's not them, it's Fabulous, and Fabulous did Fabulous on verse one of this song, no pun intended. As a kid that grew up in the Bieber era, I never really listened to Bieber, but when someone asks me what's my favorite Bieber song, I always say right here. Drake singing, you know, harmonizing over Tiger's rap is really great in this song. Future took this song over. I never knew this Kanye and Drake collab ever happened on this Jamie song. I never knew it. Never knew it. They dropped this song right before life got horrible. It's like the most unironic thing ever. This song's overall vibe is so good. It's so timeless. I just love the rugged vintage feel of this song. If you win an ox battle and you have Drake and you have to beat somebody, play this song. Um, fun, commercially successful rap song. This is when Drake was Drizzy Drake. Like he was Drizzy and all over this song. And this, this is Champagne Poppy Drake. I'm, I don't call him that, but that, that. Next song. I got money to blow. Get it in. Drake compliments Summer Walker so well off this song. This is a remix, so Summer Walker had to choose somebody to remix it with, and she chose the exact right person. The immense vibes that this song urges is just unbeatable. I was so happy when these twin brothers jumped on the same song and made a banger. Man, this song, and Future in general, was just so prominent in my upbringing. Like, like songs like these were just on the radio, all you listen to, and I'm not complaining. But this Future song with the Tim's instrumental is just a tad, tad bit better. This in the slightest region. When you first hear that bass as soon as you click play on this song you already know what time it is bro come on please go listen to how drake entered this song there's a lot of newbies that are gonna be like well i've never heard of this song it can't be better than future of the migo but listen to this song please this song from this trio had 2018 in a chokehold and so did this one this one also had a chokehold of 2018 that's three songs off this Bear Man Prices album in what, the top 80? If that's not a sign to go listen to this album, I don't know what is. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Tony Montana, Tony Montana. I really like the flute on this song and 2 Chainz body to his verse as well. I've always preferred this French Montana song over No Stylist for me personally. It's more of a banger banger, you know what I mean? Wale's poetry on this song is immaculate with Drake's ad-libs and that piano and guitar duo amazing the production from Khaled and the lyrics from drake bring me back to summer's 2016 please wayne just make it sound so easy when he flowing like i i just i i, I admire it i reminisce with the introduction instruments on this song and the beat the instrumental is just so mellow and i just think back to old times with it this is the song you play at the villain arc of something the villain arc of a movie character of a career just something 
top 50. If you made it to this point of the video, go ahead and like it. You like something about it. I really, 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 really appreciate it. But uh, yeah, we got this song Street Cred coming in at 50. Killer Mike, the winner of the 2024 album of the year, had a great performance on this song. And for the people that talk down on his name for winning the album of the year, just they, they young. They don't know no better. And I'm not even old. I'm not even, I'm not in my 20s and I know Killer Mike. It just goes to show you like internet trolls, just bots on the internet that don't know no better. Going Bad, this song was so fire when it dropped. It, and at 49, at face value, you think this is too high, but there's just so many good features, I promise to you. And if you think Drake's performance on Going Bad was so elite, it shouldn't be this, what, low, 49? Just go listen to this Drake performance. This one's better. This one's better. And then just add Jay-Z and Timbaland. Like, come on, bro. Head bopper. This song is a beat knocker. I can proudly recite every lyric from this song. Beyonce's part, the duet part between the two of them, and Drake's part where it's like, I'm going to pull up on you. Don't go pull up. I'm going to pull up. Shout out to Jada Kiss. I haven't heard that name in a minute. But his build up to Wayne and Drake's part is great. T.I., bro. I've just always just messed with his flow. He's just so cool. This shit raw. Oh, bruh. From the game's introduction to the overall atmosphere of this song, it makes me feel like I'm at like a college or something. It's so grand, it's so great. This song is, man, Rick Ross mastered the legitimacy of luxury rap with music like this. Drake legitimately took this song over. He took it away from P. Rain. It was cool seeing two artists from my, you know, upbringing come back together and make a song like this. You just have to sit back and admire how mellow toned and smooth sounding this song really is. Just an absolute P and D classic. I've I always loved this song from those Vine days way back in the day. Like just an absolutely legendary YG song. As a kid for a long extended periods of time, I swear this was a Drake song. Had no idea it was a Gucci feature or I thought it was vice versa. You get what I'm trying to say. I've always just loved how rich this song feels. From the subtle beat and the subtle tempo of this song, the flow is amazing. Just one of Drake's best performances from this decade. Look Alive had a run for his time. Had everybody in that bit. Shoo, shoo. Shoo! And the black boy's part was crazy. Bitch, come through. You, you and you. you. Man, that's hard. If there's anybody that disrespects Nicki Minaj's like discography or lyricism, just play this song. They will change their mind. One of my favorite DJ Khaled mashups of all time. Shout out to Usher on his performance on this song. I've always just had this immense respect for the Jamie Foxes, T.I.'s, Commons, artists like that. This soulful sound is like no exception. I've always loved this iconic Big Sean song from my childhood. Always. I can recite every lyric from this song. You can say it's overplayed, overlistened, but you can't deny that this is a classic. This vibe of a song has always just been uplifting and Drake's part is, whew, I mean, it's 29 for a reason. The most euphoric Drake intro I've ever heard. Probably the most played song on my dad's radio when he used to take me to school. Shout out to Ricky Smiley. <laughs> the best collab between P&D and Drake out of both of their discographies. The shockwaves that this song had created between Meek Mill, Drake, Quentin Miller, and all these names, all these songs back to back, Meek Mill's this. It's legendary in that sense, minus even the material in the actual song. I swear I'm not that type of person to be like, I miss all Drake. I mean, I, I mean, I do, but I like to enjoy the present, you know, but with songs like this, yeah, yeah, I miss old Drake. During this quest of finding the number one Drake feature, I realized at this exact point where each and every last one of these songs can contend for the number one spot on this video. I promise you. Coming in at number 23, no lie. This song is a trap classic, a club banger. If you're a lady watching this video, if you don't know this song, you truthfully missing out. Truthfully. Man, I can't wait for J. Cole to drop again this year so we can get songs like these again. My greatest accomplishment in life is reciting every single lyric from Wayne's verse on this song. To this day. To this exact moment. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. The remix on this song was the greatest decision in human history. One of the greatest things I've ever put my ears upon. One of Lil Wayne's most legendary verses of all time. Take time one day just to go to this song. Don't even play the music. Just look at his lyrics and look at the actual poetry he put on the paper. If only Kendrick and Drake just didn't have beef. Man, Drake got beef with everybody. If Drake didn't have beef with people, they'd make more songs like this. Fun fact with this song, when Kendrick Lamar says, Girl, I'm Kendrick Lamar, mm. aka Benz is to me just a car. As a little kid, I used to say, Girl, I'm Kendrick Lamar, K E N D R I C K Lamar. I don't know what made me think he was saying that, but I don't know, it's just what I heard. 
I have so many core, 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 core memories with this song. One of the sickest beats of my lifetime. Oh my God. And just throw 2015 Future and 2015 Drake on it. One of the greatest R&B songs I've ever heard. And yes, I'm standing on that. Number 11, uh, No New Friends. Um, that's, that's luxury, luxury dog. dog. They Day want one, them stuck with, with me, dog. dog. On God, my favorite song of all time. On a Tuesday, just the greatest vibe of my life. And that's how you know this list ain't biased. I got my favorite song at 10. Whoever Tez is just sparked this deep and meaningful lyricism from Drake. So shout out to Tez and Alicia Keys. Can't forget her. I can just think back to little old me, little old acts in the skate ring with this song playing on the intercom. Memories. When the trumpets hit on this song, you already know what time it is. Just this absolute classic is going to bless your ears. This song is like them telling us we made it. We did it. It's like a homegoing song. You can just feel the emotion and the nostalgia from it. One of Lil Wayne's best songs lyrically, period. I haven't heard this song in so long. And when I reheard it for the first time in a minute, literally just goosebumps riveting my body. Drake, amazing. Rick Ross, amazing. But Wayne's delivery on the back portion of this song, perfect. Perfect. Coming in at number three, Ashton Martin music. The classic voice of Chrisette Michelle throughout this thing. To the verses Rick Ross gave to Drake going from R&B to rap. So well and profound. It's a spectacle. Number two, Stay Scheming by Rick Ross again with French Montana. This song was so ahead of its time. Like you could hear Drake just so just driven and rapping like he got a purpose, got a reason. And you can hear it in the voice. You can hear it in the verses. And uh, it's great. But it's not number one. Because at number one, if you have not guessed it already, Trophies came out on top in my quest on finding the best Drake feature. Now, I know some of y'all are like, no, my favorite song isn't one. No, no, no. So tell me down there in the comments what the best Drake feature is. If you made it to this point of video, I thank you. Like the video for me. I'm just asking for 500 likes. None too crazy. And uh, these videos right here are just like this one. If you like the video, you'll like these. That's all I can tell you. Can't tell you that much.